going on everybody? Noah with Madison Angling and today's video is going to be showing you my favorite spring walleye trolling baits. Now more specifically, these are baits that I'm running now that the game fish season is going to be open here in just about a week, a little over a week here in southern Wisconsin. So these are the baits that I use after dark to troll for walleyes on my local waters and this actually works in a lot of systems all over the southern part of Wisconsin and the northern part of Wisconsin. So I'm going to show you guys the different baits, why I choose them. We're going to get some underwater footage of each of them and you'll be able to kind of see what I'm talking about when I explain how each bait kind of fits a certain scenario. So let's get right into it. So probably the first, and in my opinion, one of the most important things to consider is the profile of the bait that you're using. This time of year, you definitely want to match the hatch, especially if you're fishing in clear water, which a lot of times you will be. Typically early season, the water's super clear. There's not a lot of boat traffic. The water's cold. There isn't a lot of algae blooms going on. So you want to be fishing with baits that are getting fairly close to what the fish are actually feeding on. So that being said, the first thing you're probably going to notice is a lot of these baits are a stick style bait or a jerk bait, some kind of like a stick minnow type profile. Uh, I don't really like to go with chunky baits this time of year. You certainly can if that works on the waters that you fish. However, a lot of the water that I fish in the southern part of Wisconsin, stick baits are absolutely the way to go. So profile wise, I like to keep things pretty slim, pretty narrow, something that looks like a minnow. And the next thing is probably something a lot of people don't really think about. And the one thing that people really, really think about, and the question I get asked the most is what color, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So beyond profile, what is probably one of the most important things for me is sound. All baits make different noises. In fact, there are baits that are, you know, the same. Let's say you bought 10 of the same lure. One out of those 10 baits is probably going to sound a little bit different than the others. And sometimes that's the bait that gets eaten. If you are super picky about that kind of thing, you could definitely sort through a bunch of baits, find the ones that you think run different and get eaten more than others and sort them out. I don't pay that much attention to it, but I do pay attention to the amount of noise that my baits are making. So that being said, with the gamut of baits that I employ, which really isn't very many, it's about four stick style baits, there are baits that make a lot of noise, and there's baits that make kind of a medium amount of noise, and there's baits that make hardly any noise at all. And each one of those lures definitely has a, a time and a place that they work really, really well. Now, generally speaking, I'll go with something fairly noisy most of the time because it's nighttime. I'm looking for aggressive fish. And a lot of times those fish will key in on that kind of aggressive, louder bait. Now, that being said, every night's different, especially when you're fishing in ultra clear, shallow water. So on an average evening, especially if there's a little bit of wind chop, I'm looking for something a little louder, a little bit more obnoxious. So the Husky Jerk is a great option for that. Now, if it's calm water, it's quiet, you know, not a lot of surface disturbance, a lot of times I'm gonna switch things up, I'm gonna go to a more subtle bait. So one of my absolute favorites over this last couple of seasons is actually the Rapala Shadow Wrap. That is an amazing bait. It is supposed to be a jerk bait, but you can fish these things however you want to, and they are an incredible finesse trolling bait. They're an awesome option for when things are really quiet. And then of course, you kind of have the in-between baits, baits that maybe are sort of on the verge of being loud, but they're still kind of quiet. It's good to have variety, and the beauty of being able to run three lines per person here in Wisconsin, you can experiment. You can have a different bait making a different noise on pretty much all of your lines, and then you can deduce from there what the fish are actually looking for. Now again, not all baits are created equal. There are definitely baits that shine at other times of the year rather than early in the season. One of those being one of my standby absolute favorites, and that is a hot and tot. Now, I'm certainly not bashing hot and tots. I love hot and tots, especially in the summer. However, a, a big mistake a lot of people make early in the season is they run baits that are just too aggressive. So if you look at this thing running in the water, it has a really hard wobble, it walks really aggressively, and all of these baits that I'm gonna be showing you here are running at the same speed. I'm running the boat at one and a half miles an hour, and you can see a big difference in the action between the hot and tot and pretty much all of these stick baits. And there's, again, nothing particular about the hot and tot, but it is a very popular walleye bait, and a lot of people end up running baits that are just a little bit too aggressive early in the season in cold water. So make sure that the baits that you're selecting have kind of a slow to moderate action to them, a nice side to side roll, not something that comes through the water like a jackhammer. All right, so all of that being said, 
Now we can talk about color. For me, I'm not super huge on color, but that being said, when color does matter, it can really matter. It can make a big difference between you catching a few fish and catching a lot of fish. So early in the season, again, being that the water is super clear, we usually wanna fish baits that have a more natural look to them. So I'm in favor of more of kind of your natural bait fish patterns. I really like things that look like a perch. I like things that are silver. I like things that are white and you know anything green, blue, silver, and even this one might kind of shock you, but the glass minnow, the, the Rapala Husky Jerk glass minnow, the totally clear one is an awesome, awesome nighttime bait. Believe it or not, it totally is. And if you think about it, walleyes are eating minnows, like live real minnows, right? And they're eating them at night. They don't make any noise. They're just kind of there floating around, but they can track those down. So if you got something banging around down there with hooks and rattles, they're definitely gonna find that. So really, color doesn't make that big of a difference, but to err on the side of caution, I typically run colors that are very neutral and very natural. Unless the water is really dirty, then I'm gonna go to something real bright and obnoxious to try to kind of throw a little silhouette out there and uh, stand out against the dirty water. All right, so now that we've kind of covered the profile and sound and color end of things, we're gonna talk actual baits. And you've seen this bait a couple times. It's really flashy. I like putting it up in front of the camera. That is a Rapala Husky Jerk. This is a number 10 in Fire Tiger. And this is an absolute classic walleye bait, especially for casting and trolling. And I absolutely love this bait because it has everything I'm kind of looking for in a crankbait for this time of year. It has the right profile. It comes in awesome fish catching colors. And it's got a pretty loud rattle to it, which you guys heard earlier. All of those things really make this kind of the ultimate bait, at least in my opinion, on the waters that I fish. However, there are nights when, again, you wanna go with something a little more subtle. So as far as the sizes are concerned, I'm typically running a size 10, which is this guy right here. Sometimes I'll even downsize to a size eight, which is one size smaller. And at the larger end of the spectrum, I'll run a size 12. But typically in the waters that I'm fishing, the number 10 gets smashed. The really cool thing about this bait is the action. It has a very classic kind of tight wobbling action and it runs at pretty much any speed you want to run it at. And that's kind of the beauty of this bait. You can speed it up, slow it down, but the action stays very much the same. It's a very consistent running bait. And that's something that I really like in, uh, you know, kind of my, my workhorse crankbaits. I want them to make sure, I want to make sure that they're pretty much always running consistently with one another. I know what that bait's doing at all times and I don't have to worry about what it's doing depending on the speed. So that is my number one choice for 90% of my fishing. That is the Rapala Husky Jerk. The next bait that was an absolute superstar this last season, in fact, this is one of my kind of battle-worn baits from last year, one of the few that actually survived, is the Rapala Shadow Wrap Shad. This is a slow rising bait. It is designed to be a jerk bait again, but it is actually an excellent trolling bait. And if you look here, you'll see that it actually has a really nice slow wobble to it. It has kind of a nice wandering, meandering wobble with a lot of flash and it really excels at night. I've done very, very well trolling with this bait at night. And again, comes in awesome fish catching colors. It has a nice subtle action that's not overworking the bait when it's cold. And there are some nights when, again, the fish don't want something super aggressive. Maybe they don't want a loud husky jerk. This bait has, again, like you heard earlier, a really quiet rattle. It's very, very subtle. So on nights, again, when it's calm, no wind, the fish are being kind of picky, I'm gonna reach for something like this. And a lot of times this bait will get absolutely annihilated. So now kind of finding a middle ground between the Husky Jerk and the Shadow Wrap is this guy. This is the Scatter Wrap Minnow from Rapala. This thing is awesome. They come in again, really awesome fish catching colors, very much a similar profile to either a regular floater or a Husky Jerk. It's basically the same thing. But the big difference here is the big lip on here. And that basically makes the bait walk and makes it wander. And it actually will do that at rather low speeds. Typically, I'm gonna be trolling anywhere from 1.2 up to maybe 1.8 miles an hour, again, after dark, keeping things kind of slow. It's cold water and it's dark out. But even at those speeds, this bait will kind of walk and wander. And it also has kind of a moderate amount of noise. So it's kind of in between the Husky Jerk and the Shadow Wrap. And it kind of is in between both of them as far as the action goes. And the one thing that I will say is definitely a great triggering factor of this bait is the fact that it does wander. It does kind of walk a little bit. And essentially, you know, on some nights, fish want it sped up, they want it slowed down. And some nights that it's that direction change, it's that speed up slow down that gets the fish to eat. So a lot of times you can incorporate turns, just kind of little S turns, meandering turns 
while you're trolling to speed up and slow down your lines. And a lot of times that'll trigger bites. This bait basically does that all on its own. It kind of just kicks out and does kind of weird goofy stuff all on its own. And that is an awesome, awesome triggering mechanism. Now the last bait in my lineup is this guy. This is a classic. You can get them absolutely anywhere. This is the Storm Junior Baby Thunder Stick with the shallow diving lip. This thing is awesome in super shallow water. It has a great body roll to it. It's got the nice slim profile, comes in great fish catching colors, and this is an awesome match to a lot of the forward species that we have on the bodies of water that I guide on. And again, you can run this thing really, really shallow. And that's one thing I'll add with most of these baits is you can run them actually very shallow. Generally speaking, I'm targeting anywhere from like four to maybe seven feet of water after dark. And of course, we're trolling with planer boards, getting our lines away from the boat. But generally, you put these back anywhere from, you know, 15 to maybe 25 feet, and you'll get those baits just off the bottom. And they, they do very, very well on a short amount of line. They get a lot of good action out of them, even with a short amount of line. So with that, that is pretty much my spring walleye crankbait lineup. So with that, those are my top producing early season walleye trolling baits. They are awesome choices for pretty much any night. You know, I, at any given evening when I'm trolling for walleyes, I've probably got a spread of pretty much any of these four baits out there, just trying to play around with profile and noise to try to figure out what the fish want. With there being so many crankbaits out there and me having just, I probably own thousands of these things. That can be a little bit overwhelming when you're trying to pick out a bait, but the biggest thing I can tell you is first, consider your profile. You again, want that stick bait profile. Next, consider the noise that that bait makes and then consider the color. So hopefully with that, you guys are going to have a successful opener coming up here just over a week. And hopefully I will see you guys on the water soon.